Hi, we're now going to focus on a really important topic in computing, which is all about how we are able to maximize use of technology to make things as inclusive and accessible as possible. So I'll just start with a recap slide because I have shown this before in a video on modern teams. So inclusivity as a term is very general. It's just about you trying to maximize your ability to meet all of your team members or clients or customers individual needs right all of us have got different requirements and things we like things we don't like and if you're being inclusive you're trying to make sure everybody feels able to engage with whatever it is you are doing accessibility is what we're going to focus on in the next few minutes but also that bottom part of the slide about the fact that working is nowadays so much more flexible because of modern technology where we can use video calls and we can work remotely and we can set our own schedules all of those aspects also can feed into accessibility as well. For example, if you are maybe physically impaired, maybe you find it hard to travel between different places, the fact that you can do some of your work at home or not have to commute or not have to travel around the country to speak to people could be really beneficial. So that is one example of how modern tech can be good for accessibility. But what is accessibility? Well. It's all about supporting people who have impairments, which you can say fairly interchangeably with disabilities. And most people may not be able to access or use your system without you having certain support in place. So impairments might be visual, people who are blind or have low levels of sight, could be hearing impairments, people who might be deaf, people who might have physical impairments, maybe they can't use their hands or can't type or can't click a mouse maybe cognitive, things like dyslexia, all of those sort of impairments should not stop somebody being able to use a computer because you should be making sure you are adapting and making your tech as accessible as possible. So for example, interface design is a good way to make things as accessible as possible, especially for visual or cognitive impairments, like that color blindness, like that dyslexia I mentioned. So for example, your layout on your screen is important. The interface is what the user is able to see and interact with. So the layout is important. If you are, you know, shoving text off to one side or it's sort of unclear what part of it's more important than another part, that makes it hard for everybody. But in particular, someone who has an impairment might find that confusing or unreadable. Colors are important. Having a simple color palette is useful having similar colors but having said that it's important to make sure the colors you are using have high contrast between each other especially with backgrounds so contrast is the difference between two colors i'm using a sort of i don't know what color you'd call that teal turquoise color and my text here is very similar and that's hard for anyone to read but again in particular if you've got an impairment it makes it harder than it needs to be uh, also, your font choice should not be underestimated. Simple fonts are better, clear fonts are better. You could have very elaborate and squished together and tall fonts, which actually, again, are probably quite hard to read for everybody, but could be worsened by someone who has an impairment. You might be able to use a more fancy font for a title, like I kind of have in this slide, but for your main body of text, keeping it simple is important. Those are all aspects of the design, however, and often the actual website or application is built by somebody else. And there are certain tools which can be actually physically, I say physically, can be uh, logically integrated into your website or application, such as supporting screen readers. So a screen reader is some software which is able to take the text on a website or on a program and convert it to speech. So the speech or sound something like Alexa or Siri, uh, a robot -y speech which converts the text on the screen. So this is focused on people who have blindness or some other visual impairment. So what screen reader support means is as a designer, you are trying to, on your page, put your text in a way that the screen reader is able to access. Now, by that I mean, as a designer, as a, a coder, you could hide lots of text in images. Some text 
is shoved into images to help with word counts and things like that. That's not good for a screen reader because the screen reader can't access text inside images. And that's why alt text is quite important. So when you are coding a website, like you might have had experience of, when you are embedding a picture, like this web accessibility initiative logo, you get an option when you're coding it to give some alternative text, alt text. This alt text is accessible to the screen reader, the text to speech program. And so it can access that description and speak it to the user. So the user is aware of what the image would be, despite not maybe being able to see it themselves. Without that alt text, the user potentially hasn't got much ability to understand what's going on. Just to give another example of where a screen reader maybe is not supported by some websites beyond hiding text in images, to try and boost rankings in web searches, some website designers and programmers will try and shove in lots of text which can't be seen by most users. So for example, you might try and hide a common search query behind an image, or you might mask some keywords in the same color as your background to try and artificially boost your search ranking. Now the issue is the screen reader can't tell what is part of your web page and what's part of your trick to boost your search engine ranking. And so it will get read to the user, which might be quite confusing. So if you are being supportive of screen readers, you are keeping the text to what is necessary and including alt text where you can. You could even go a step further and integrate your own text to speech screen reader feature in your own website or application by providing a listen to this page feature, which you'll sometimes see. This can be better than a, a standard screen reader because you could get a person to actually record the speech this time as opposed to having a robot voice say it instead. If it's an article, for example, you could have one of your journalists read it out and embed it in this feature to again better support people who might have, say, vision impairments. And finally, another positive for this might be providing an ability to change fonts. So by that adjustment, I mean making it bigger, making it smaller, and also potentially changing the typeface. I mentioned before that some fonts are harder to read than others. Some are very elaborate and difficult, but there are also certain fonts which are designed for people with dyslexia or for certain learning difficulties. And so potentially allowing access to change the font to that might be really beneficial as well.